Reptiles are some of the fascinating animals housed in Riverbank's Aquarium Reptile Complex. But for some of our cold-blooded friends, populations in the wild have significantly declined. In this all-access Riverbanks, we take a closer look at the zoo's role in raising rare reptiles. Joined now by curator of herpetology, Scott Poff. Scott, these are some pretty amazing animals that we have here. Tell me a little bit about them. They are. These are Grand Cayman blue iguanas, and of course they're from the Caribbean island of Grand Cayman. And uh, they were at one time fairly numerous on that island, but when people got there, started to develop it, built uh, roads and vacation houses that destroyed their habitat. And then the people also brought dogs and cats with them, which also uh, killed the guanas directly and fed on the eggs and the babies. So at any rate, they became very, very rare. And about 10 years ago in 1992, 2002, there are only about 12 to wow. 24 left in the wild. But captive breeding programs, both on the island of Grand Cayman and here in the United States, have bolstered that population. So we're taking captive bred animals, like the one that you're holding, uh, grew them up to about this size, adults, released them on the island. Now there's about 800 iguanas wow. on the island, but they still have a lot of, of pressures on them. They get killed by cars, there's still a limited amount of habitat, and so we're releasing animals back into the wild, but also maintaining captive colonies like here at Riverbank Zoo. And this year, for the first time, we were able to hatch our first blue iguana. So this is the dad I'm holding awesome. right here with that brilliant blue color on his head, and that's one of the offspring that you are holding right there in your hand. Now, when did we start raising these animals here at the zoo? Well, we've had these animals for about four years. We got them as juveniles, so it took us a while to grow them up to adult size and then establish a compatible pair that likes each other and that would reproduce. Very interesting. And this is a baby here. How, about how old is this one? Uh, this guy is about six months old, uh, but these animals are very long lived. They can live to be 50 years old wow. or older. And folks visiting the zoo can see them on exhibit they here? They can. They're in the desert gallery of the Aquarium Reptile Complex. They're big and showy, uh, like a lot of warm blooded animals, especially ones like this that really like it hot. They're more active in the middle of the day than they are first thing in the morning. So that's a good time to come see them. We're outside now in Riverbank's Galapagos tortoise yard. And Scott, you were telling me that the Galapagos tortoise is the largest tortoise in the world? That's right. They can weigh as much as 900 pounds. And a brazo here weighs about 550 pounds. That's pretty big. Now, how small are they when they're born? Because we've had some success here in breeding these animals recently. The eggs of these animals are about the size of a tennis ball. And so you can imagine that the young tortoise has to fit inside of that. So he's going to be fairly small compared to these enormous adults. And then how long does it take them to actually reach this size? Well, we really don't know. It takes about 20 years or so for them to reach sexual maturity. But like all reptiles, they grow throughout their life. This animal is at least 100 years old. We think he might be 150 years old. With reptiles, it's really hard to tell. And as you notice, we've got some smaller uh, tortoises and turtle here. Scott, tell us about the significance of these hatchlings. Well, what you're holding is a critically endangered species called a Burmese black mountain tortoise. And the reason they're endangered is because they're being harvested for the food trade in China. So in the area where these guys live in Southeast Asia, they're being collected from the wild, the adults, and used as food. We have the captive population here at Riverbanks called an assurance colony. And this is our first hatchling from this type of turtle, tortoise, which is the fourth largest tortoise in the world. This is the biggest, this is the fourth largest. They can weigh up to 100 pounds. And how, uh, about how long do these tortoises live? We really don't know, but certainly probably more than 100 years. Reptiles, especially uh, tortoises like this, it's hard to tell how old they are, but we know from captive animals, like a brazo here, that they can live for a very, very long time. And of course, guests too can see these animals when they come to the zoo. Now tell us about the Pan's Box Turtle. We've also had breeding success with those, um, adding to the population. We have. This is a critically endangered species that we think is extinct in the wild. They're no longer found in China, which is their native range. And again, these were harvested for the food trade and for the traditional medicine trade in China. We established a population here at Riverbanks about 15 years ago. The adults that we got came right from a food market in China. Now we think they're no longer uh, in China, in the wild, and they only exist in captivity. 
Uh, we have uh, about 17 or 18 of these here at Riverbank Zoo, and that's probably the largest single population in the world. And we think there might be less than 100 Pan's box turtles left in the entire world. So obviously a critically endangered species. But uh, you can come here to the zoo and see these. And uh, thank you, Scott. And thanks to our little buddies here for joining us today. You too can help our conservation mission at the zoo. To learn how, visit riverbanks.org. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on All Access Riverbanks.